In 2023, Formula One witnessed a car that seemed untouchable. It wasn't just winning, it was rewriting the definition of dominance. The Red Bull Racing RB19 won 21 out of 22 races, shattered records and made Max Verstappen nearly unstoppable. But this wasn't luck. It wasn't just a fast engine or a great driver. It was the result of extraordinary engineering, a car that maximized the potential of the new F1 regulations. So how do you create the most successful successful Grand Prix car ever to have raced. Let's take a closer look. To understand the RB19, we need to go back to 2022. Formula One had just entered a new era. After decades of wings and airflow tricks, the sport returned to ground effect aerodynamics, forcing designers to rethink how cars generated grip. The new rules also introduced 18-inch tyres with low profiles and pushed teams to focus on underfloor performance more than ever before. Red Bull's 2022 car, the RB18, adapted brilliantly to the new rules, winning 17 of 22 races. But it wasn't perfect. It started the season overweight, and on some weekends, Ferrari had the edge in qualifying. The RB19 was different. It took everything learned from the RB18, shaved off the weaknesses, and transformed into something close to flawless. It would go on to dominate in a way we might never see again. And its story of success begins with its power unit. Modern F1 engines are tightly regulated. Every team runs a 1.6-litre turbocharged V6, paired with a hybrid system that recovers energy from braking and exhaust gases so that, on paper, they make around a 1,000 horsepower. So why was the RB19 so much faster? The answer lies in efficiency and packaging. Red Bull's Honda power unit was incredibly compact, allowing the bodywork to be tighter and more aerodynamically efficient. That tight packaging meant more clean airflow to the rear of the car and under the floor. Crucial for maximizing ground effect. Then there's energy deployment. Red Bull perfected how the hybrid system delivered its boost, syncing it perfectly with the car's drag reduction system. When the rear wing opened, the RB19 often gained an extra 15 to 20 kilometers per hour over its rivals. Passing wasn't just possible, it was inevitable. But straight line speed alone doesn't win championships. What truly set the RB19 apart was the way it controlled the air. Aerodynamics is where the RB19 became untouched. Most of its downforce came not from the wings, but from the floor. Air rushed under the car through sculpted venturi tunnels, creating suction that glued it to the track. The diffuser and underbody were masterpieces of airflow management, while the waterfall-shaped side pods guided air perfectly toward the rear wing and diffuser. The result was a car that could carry less wing on the straights and still corner with incredible speed. It was essentially two cars in one, a low-drag rocket on the straights and a high grip monster in the corners. Even Mercedes and Ferrari admitted they couldn't see how to replicate it during the season. But Formula One isn't just about raw speed. Over a race distance, tyre management can be the difference between winning and finishing fifth. The RB19 excelled here too. It was famously gentle on its tyres, allowing Verstappen to push without destroying the rubber. The suspension, geometry and weight balance were critical. Red Bull's front pull rod and rear push rod suspension kept the car low, stable, and predictable. That stability reduced sliding, which meant less heat build up in the tyres. Less heat meant slower degradation, and slower degradation meant Red Bull could run longer stints and more flexible strategies than anyone else. Every detail of the car worked toward one goal, dominance without stress. The numbers are staggering. 21 wins in 22 races, 10 consecutive victories for Max Verstappen, the highest win percentage in Formula One history, and the most remarkable part, the RB9 rarely looked like it was pushing to the limit. Even when rivals briefly challenged, Red Bull always seemed to have performance in reserve. It was a car that didn't just win, it controlled the sport. So, what does the RB19 mean for Formula One? It is the ultimate demonstration of how engineering brilliance and perfect interpretation of the rules can produce a car that is almost untouchable. The RB19 combined a decade of hybrid experience with an unrivaled understanding of ground effect aerodynamics, tyre behaviour and chassis balance. Its dominance forced every other team to rethink their entire design philosophy. Data from its season will influence Red Bull's future cars and could shape the approach of competitors for years. Even road car engineers will study its solutions from energy deployment strategies to airflow management. In the cost cap era, where resources are limited, the RB19 proves that efficiency and ingenuity can achieve what raw spending no longer can. Its legacy isn't just 
trophies, it's a new benchmark for what dominant truly means in modern F1. The RB19 wasn't just a Formula One car, it was a statement, a season-long exclamation mark on Red Bull's engineering excellence. A car that made victory feel inevitable, a machine so refined its only competition was itself. Its story is a reminder that Formula One is as much a battle of ideas as it is a battle of drivers. Every curve of carbon, every Venturi tunnel, and every line of software code was part of a symphony of engineering perfection. When future engineers look back at this era, they'll study the RB19 and see more than just a championship winning car. They'll see a lesson in how vision, precision and persistence can create something that borders on invincible. This was perfection on wheels.